Do you think the push for realistic graphics has become a detriment to games? The whole so expensive argument and animations start to feel so janky. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Like no, no one. I, I don't think anyone is asking for like it's, it's the best example. The the, the horse te testicle shrinking physics in Red Dead Redemption Two. You know what I mean? Like no one needs that. But like that could just have been a marketing thing. But I think it's it still holds true. You know. Uh, no one needs this stuff. There were shots of um, Final Fantasy 15 that just were like, no one needs it to be like this, you know? Like, this this is too much, and this is why the, the budgets are so inflated, I think. But uh, it's 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 still impressive, you know? I, I enjoyed the, the visuals, but it doesn't really matter all that much to me. It's like, I think we spoke about this in the last Q&A or maybe on a, uh, on a stream recently, how, you know, AAA games push the graphical fidelity so much Whereas a lot of gamers claim they don't care, but then when these games came out, come out suddenly they really do care. Well, that's because they know so much of the budget went toward it, so they, they want to be critical of it. You know what I mean? It's like, you spent this much money making this game look this good, and it doesn't even look all that good, or it has so many so many glitches. I feel like I feel like quality control in AAA games is getting worse and worse and worse as I get older. You know, I think didn't the new Tom Clancy game have a lot of problems too? You know? And then there's even like big, big award-winning games. Like I, I hate to say this because it's like it's it's somewhat something of a spoiler for for the Witcher video, but also because it's like one of those sound bites that's gonna just piss people off. But Witcher Three is buggier than Fallout Four. I, I don't understand why you know we're not allowed to say that. Like it's it's right up there with Fallout Four. You know what I mean? It's nowhere near Fallout Seventy Six, but even with all the patches, like Witcher Three is glitchy as fuck. So I don't know. You know, and that's game of the year for 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 that that year for so many people. You know what I mean? So, I I don't I don't understand why we're why we're tolerating this bullshit. You know, I don't know why we're tolerating, but like so many people tolerated with Bethesda. You know, Fallout 4 is is was terrible, terrible, terrible at launch, terrible. You know. So yeah, I don't I'm not a I'm not a big fan of it, but uh, at the same time I'm gonna be right there criticizing it if it doesn't look good because I know how much money went into it and uh, it kind of pisses me off you know it's like oh well games are way more expensive now so you, we have to do these shitty dlc practices and and so on and so forth and it's just well yeah but i, I don't think that they're managing their their teams all that well and way too much resources are going into all this shit that doesn't really pay off that well and seems to be leading to rushed end products that are glitchy as fuck how do you feel about your drinking games, namely IMO, the deep intricate systems that are flavorful over functional? Yeah, I don't really know much about your drink and I don't know what to what to say about that. Uh, I think I would prefer a, a flawed, ambitious game than a than a safe, perfect game in almost every case. I found that as a solo developer, I've had to make logical constellations to my game as a result of my not having enough hours in the day to do what I want. Working with the UE4 engine is beautiful in that I don't really need to make major constellations in regards to actual graphics, but the visuals pose a whole new problem. I find that a lot of games gamble on where they will try and make constellations. For example, stock sounds stand out like a sore thumb, recycled NPCs without any explanation, etc. Can you talk about some instances where these constellations drastically impacted your experience in games? Witcher 3. Let's talk more about Witcher 3. So... <laughs> Let's. Why uh, even make them? The well, yeah, why? why? We'll, 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 just, we'll just strip it out over the, over the streams. Uh, reused NPCs are a real big problem in Witcher 1 and 3. Uh, not so much in Witcher 2. Uh, in Witcher 1, it's charming. This is almost word for word from the script. Uh, in Witcher 1, it's charming, and it's kind of like a like a low-budget stage play sort of thing with the same kind of actor coming out and playing multiple roles. It's really, really charming. Not charming in Witcher 3. In Witcher 3, it's really fucking dumb, and it really annoys me, and there's a whole section devoted to it, so get ready to hold hold on to, to your silver swords because it's fucking happening, you know? Like, yeah, uh, it really, really bothers me, but it only bothers me because it's a AAA game. Like, like I said, it's it's okay in in Witcher One because it, it's cute, you know. Like it's this is the best they could do, and they had a shoestring budget, and the game is still really fucking impressive despite that. You know what I mean? So it's like it's 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 fine, it's acceptable. So um, I'm right there with you. Like it can be quite a big detriment, but I think most people know. And, and will understand, you know, based on the, the size, the dev team, it should really only be the price of the game, but even dev team is is, is uh, something that they find acceptable. But yeah, um, 
I've looked into into how much money it would be to to make the game that I want to make and uh, what concessions I would have to have to make and and the visuals kind of variety I guess is is one of them that's 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 a big one you know the visuals dictate quite a lot about when it comes to, to making a game and um, you would think that pixel art would be the the easiest and, and cheapest choice but it's not always you know it's not always the easiest choice at all and uh, it's it, it can be tricky to, to do what you to, to pick the right one especially when you're also learning about um, game design and putting things together at the same time so yeah I uh, I, I think that um, it's it's a big problem but I wouldn't worry too much about it if you're a solo developer and you're working on your on your uh, on your first game and you are joker card what's this and you are hoping to um oh god sorry i got distracted there and you're hoping to to be successful with it you know what i mean like like you're you're hoping to to to, to go like Okay, everyone wants to be successful. Sorry, I'm rambling a little bit. Uh, if, if you want to, to to do as well with it as you possibly can with your your own like solo experience and your own solo perspective, you know what I mean? Then I think that you should try to not worry too much about your visuals and you should focus on having a really good and unique gameplay hook. And it usually pushes you toward um, uh, like a puzzle sort of thing, like a neat little puzzle concept, like uh, Baba is You, or there's this one on um, on Twitter that I'm following right now where I, I don't know the name of it, but he's got a, a system in place where he, it's like Baba is You, they, you're pushing blocks, but you have to arrange blocks in such a way that you can go inside the blocks and the blocks have miniature levels in themselves. So you can push a block into a hole in, a, in another same size block that now is shrinks down into that block and you have to make paths within the levels within the blocks. And if that sounds kind of crazy and, and not very explained very well, that's my own problem. It's, if you see it, it makes perfect sense. So it's like, it's it's cool. Like it's, it's a, a neat idea. So uh, it's harder to do something like that with combat or, you know, with a progression system because you just need so goddamn much content and, and art assets to, to go along with it. So that's what I would I would think uh, that you that you should go for. However, if you're willing to you know put a lot of time into learning how to be a, an artist and assuming that you're you're not one already, and you can um, you can you can get there. Like you can put as much time as you want into it. You know, like look at what uh, Eric Brown did with Stardew Valley, right? Like, and he's not the only one. You know, look what. Um, I can't remember his name because I'm just I'm just completely awful now. The guy who made Return Over Dead and Papers, please. That's mostly all all him, you know. Or you can make something, um, you can make something with just a lot of stock art and placeholder art, and then slowly uh, fill in the gaps by contracting the art pieces out over time instead of having to get it all done at once. And you can still do all of the, all of the game design parts and everything. So you can, you can get through that, you know, like there, there are options, but, uh, stock sound effects really, really stick out. And, um, I used to really get annoyed by them, but now it's kind of like, it's kind of charming and endearing to notice it. It's like, okay, yeah, nice. Like I noticed the, there's a scream that is used in Dungeon Keeper that it probably wasn't even used in Dungeon Keeper the first time. And it's, it's kind of cute to notice that, you know, you associate sounds with the, where you heard it first, even though that's probably not where it was first used. You know what I mean? Uh, like the Wilhelm scream has become a, a meme that, you know, you'll, you'll notice in a lot of movies and Blizzard specifically puts it in, I think every single trailer that they ever make, you know? So it's, it's, it can be endearing in, in, in a certain way, but yeah, it's, it's going to depend on how people perceive your budget and if it should have unique art, art assets for every single thing that's in the game. But as we can see from Witcher 3, that sometimes people will tolerate that no matter what. And it's, you know, it's game of the year. Oh my God, best game ever. You know, even though it has some of these problems that you're, that you're, that you're pointing out. Um, and there's no way that people would just be, you know, have favoritism for that kind of game, right? And overlook something that they would in another game. There's no way that could happen, right? So yeah, there's there's no danger there. Hmm. I'm trying to think of another another area where um, reuse stuff stuck out to me. 
I feel like uh, sometimes games go for for memes and the memes stick out too, and that's only somewhat related to it. But it's 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 relevant in this game too, like the the trolley bomb that they have, which is like you know literal face that kind of sticks out, and that kind of pulls me out of the experience. Uh, when a lot of games have lots of memes and references to, like. I know I'm guilty of doing some referential humor myself, uh, especially on stream. I try really hard not to do it in videos, but sometimes, you know, something comes along that I just can't resist. Uh, but referential humor doesn't really appeal to me much anymore. It has to be, I think it has to be like ultra specific for me to, for me to really appreciate it now. I'm just, I'm just kind of tired of it. And some games are just non-stop references with um, characters and the names of things and uh, Star Wars is a big one you know there's, there's always like kind of like a play on Star Wars characters and Star Wars things and it's kind of like eh I don't know um, so that's kind of kind of tangentially related to what you're saying but I don't think there's there's one that I guess enemies are, are a big one you know when when games just throw the same enemies over at you again and again and again but that's not more of a visual problem it's it's a filler problem so uh, i look at filler as in like in mario in one one mario right in the for the original mario brothers so I, I look at filler as the games pretty much making you do the same thing again with very little changes and, and no significant variety on the concept. And you'd be surprised once you start looking at games like this, how many games actually do this and try to get away with it, you know? So if you think of 1-1 in Mario, like imagine if 1-2 or 3-1 was, you know, exactly the same as 1-1, only the enemies were just ever so slightly different and, you know, the, the blocks were ever so slightly different, like just a couple pixels to the right or to the left, you know? Like that's just, that's just filler. That at, at, at that point to me and to put into more modern games it's like if you were to have the same sort of structure of enemy corridors or enemy battle rooms like in a game like doom and you know it's pretty much the exact same room and it's spawning the exact same enemies in the same kind of way that's when a game switches over to filler for me and having very low enemy variety uh is something that will exacerbate that problem really heavily. And sometimes it's even if you do change up the setting and the arenas that you're fighting in, it doesn't matter anymore. And that's when games like um, Neo and to some extent even Sekiro can start to feel really samey and, and, and bring it down. And that gets into the same area as the uh, reused NPCs because it's just the same thing over and over and over again because they just didn't have the budget for a lot of different enemies. Uh, so I think that's another problem too. But yeah, uh, filler is a buzzword for some people and, and they don't fully understand it, but it's like, yeah, I don't, I never expect and nor should anyone expect, you know, every single part of a game to be 100%, you know, new content. Like, like you could look at Celeste and think, okay, well, it reuses some of those mechanics and systems, you know, over multiple levels, you know, is that filler? And to me, Celeste is one of the ones that always does it in a, in a different way you know i don't think there's ever been a point in celeste or i can't think of it so if it is it does it rarely where they're asking you to do the same thing you know the exactly the same thing again and again and again um it's it's always a new arrangement and that's where i look at the things like like they become like equations mathematical equations to me it's like how can we scramble the order of uh the jump the dash the the, the moving blocks the um the void rectangles you know that sort of thing and that's how i i how i enjoy it but someone in chat just brought up bloodborne chalices and chalice dungeons and i really like the bloodborne chalice dungeons so there is a way to do it when you become more like a why can't this open when it becomes more like a roguelike sort of structure like this game technically has a lot of filler it just has a lot of different variables to scramble it all and the game just kind of rearranges and designs itself you know what i mean that's a way that you can use that to your advantage. So that's another example too, of how you can you can get away with having low asset variety. Um, but this is a bad example of that because this this does not have low asset asset variety at all. But this is a game that was uh, made with a with a bigger budget than than most indie games, and it's had a lot of DL DLC and a lot of refinement. Um, I don't know what this game was like in terms of asset variety when it first came out. So uh, maybe that would be a better example. But even then, I think. Uh, I think it'd probably be a good example because um, Macmillan made this in in like a, a couple weeks, didn't he? After after Meat Boy, I believe. Yeah. Anyway, I've rambled enough. I hope that's that's something for you. Um, I'm I'm always surprised when someone who's making games says they can get something out of the videos, and I hope that they uh, they continue to do that for you at least a little bit.
On a similar note, without wasting a lot of your time getting too deep into details, I'm trying to flesh out a combat system that isn't overly edgy but also doesn't fall flat. The game is third person with a lot of the combat involving guns, though combat is only one quarter of the game with the other three pillars already strong and not requiring additional attention. The game is not based on its combat system, but it's a necessity that will leave the game feeling empty without enough attention. You pick up a gun and right click over the shoulder aiming leads to a relatively lackluster experience, but that's what I've got. Some Max Payne style bullet time, some dodges and shit, but ultimately it feels the same. I'm thinking that really this could work, but it would have to be clean and, and uh, natural feeling. What do you look for in a combat system that keeps it fluid without having to be groundbreaking? In my opinion, animations that take control of your character, pausing for healing, the whole VATS thing. All these examples ruin combat for me. What ruins combat for you? Yeah, I'm right with you there. Those those ruin combat for me, for sure. Yeah, those really ruin combat for me. Anything that takes away control of my character for significant amounts of time. Um, Again, let's talk about Witcher 3. So the fact that you, you have to switch between different modes of play in Witcher 3 reminds me of the Final Fantasy, the first Final Fantasy uh, MMO, where you know, you'd know you be walking around and then suddenly it's combat time and your character would have to play this animation and the circle would spawn around the enemy, you and the enemy, and it's like, dun, 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 you know, like that sort of thing. Um, not really a big fan of, of that. And that's kind of how Witcher 3 kind of feels where it's constantly switching you between these two modes and, you you know you're, you're done with combat and now you have to you have to wait for the the combat cooldown timer to be over before you can finally start looting the enemies that you just killed because it won't let you loot while you're in combat and are you in combat or are you not when you're hitting space bar and suddenly you're dodging sometimes you're jumping sometimes you're not you know that sort of thing really really pulls me out of the um of the the experience um so i don't I, I shouldn't pick on Witcher 3, 3 that much, but yeah, any, anything that takes you out of that and takes control away from you for significant amounts of time, even if it doesn't have that mode change kind of thing for um, for for playing. Uh, but I would say that it's not a big problem in a game like like Doom when there's like a quick execute animation. And same with Witcher 3, like when Witcher 3 does the quick executes at the end, you know, they can feel pretty good, you know? like. Uh, but sometimes I can get the other way. Uh, I really don't like the really long parry animations and, and backstab animations and something like Code Vein, but it also gets annoying in Dark Souls. You know, you're, you're playing Dark Souls and, um, you know, I, usually whenever I, I parry uh, a Black Knight in Dark Souls now, I, I know I have enough time to pick up my glass and have a, have a big gulp of water for how long it takes for that to play out. So it almost makes me not want to use the... Um, the uh the backstab or parry because it's gonna make combat longer even though it's you know supposed to make things um you know be, be a big reward you know it's almost like it's too much of a break in in the in the gameplay flow i guess um but to answer your question the other part of your question which is you know like a, making a relatively simple combat system you know something that's something that's refined out of a third person system with you know maybe maybe not too many mechanics uh you brought up max Payne, and max Payne is just just such a good example of something that is you know pretty much bog standard now in terms of gameplay but is just such a an elegant game that they put together built around uh one thing you know and that's the um, the the bullet time um it's kind of amazing how good Max Payne is and I'm talking about the first one the second one has a little bit more but we're talking mostly about the first one okay so Max Payne if you haven't played it has is basically a game that came out somewhat after the Matrix came out and it had bullet time and you could you could slow things down um, and aim your shots and that's fine you know that's all right it, it looks impressive it's fun but what really sells Max Payne for me um, and the second game does this better because it doesn't take time juice to, to use uh, is the forward dive or the backward dive so do you know that scene in the matrix where uh, Neo is like jumping forward and you know he goes pretty much prone he does a mid-air plank and he's like poof, 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 like firing as he's falling through the air in slow motion Max Payne 1 and 2 makes you be able to do that and that to me is the whole game and I'm really interested in games that put you into committed states 
Um, so this is something I learned about myself when I was writing scripts about the messenger and Celeste. What I really enjoy in games are there's like two sides of gameplay that I really enjoy. And the first side is something that's like Bayonetta and Devil May Cry that has a lot of freedom in how you can express yourself through combat mechanics. To some extent God of War, the new God of War as well. Um, to some extent Dark Souls but less in Dark Souls than, than the other ones. Dark Souls is uh, a whole other kind of kind of nuanced topic. But you can express yourself. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of creativity. You know, usually these games aren't really that difficult, you know, and, and they allow you to be more proactive with your play and make a lot of chained decisions that you go through yourself. But then there are games on the other side that are like Celeste and The Messenger that have a have a resting state. And I'm really sorry I'm boring you to tears, Lily. So you have a resting state where, uh, she's smiling. You have a resting Many state, tissues. which is, which is, <laughs> so a resting state that is usually uh, in a platformer is when you are on the ground and not moving. So you can see this kind of resting state to active state in a game like like Mario. So in Mario 1, 2, especially 3 in Super Mario World, your resting state is standing, not moving, and then you can get into this, this run where you just hold Y, hold right, and you just jump, 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 and you never stop and you get through the whole level, like going through everything like that, you know? And that in, in, is like a flow combo state. And there's games that have come out since then that have embraced that. So Super Meat Boy has it where you just don't stop. You just you just in a, this constant chain of reacting and going through the levels and just boom, 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 boom. And then the messenger has it with you are in the air. How long can you keep yourself in the air for? And you're going through all these chains with the, with the hook shot and the cloud step and hitting enemies. And how long can you stay there? And then Celeste does it too with how, how can you chain these moves together without having to land and getting your dash back you know you're going from one air dash into another into the bubble into all this sort of stuff so those are the two sides of gameplay that i'm really interested in right now and max Payne has a the the smallest version of the second type which is that you go from the passive stationary state into the active state the combo state when you leap forward in midair and there's just it's so simple but yet it works so well it, it activates something in my brain that's like yeah fuck yeah this is so good which is that you are moving your character is committed to this jump your reticle is always changing so you have this little mini challenge of of trying to keep your shots steady and time them properly and there's even travel time for the shots if I remember correctly in, in bullet time in that game while also trying to maximize the effectiveness of the shots by going for headshots on the enemies while also you know committing yourself to the next the recovery after that or you know maximizing that that just that couple seconds of gameplay you know like that's that, that's really interesting and Max Payne does it so well you know like it does it even better than I would say like like Halo you know Halo has this thing where I remember reading or watching a documentary about how Halo is built around um, 15 second gameplay you know every single battle is the same 15 seconds you know you run in you you get into the fight you shoot as many enemies as you possibly can while avoiding their attacks your shield breaks you run for cover you you get back out there and you do the same 15 seconds again it's just that same 15 seconds over and over and over again with a little bit more variety in the enemies that it throws at you the weapons that they have um how they those enemies that they attack or they the flood that lunge at you or are they just the monsters that shoot at you or sorry the aliens that shoot at you uh, are there vehicles around are there enemies in the sky are there you know what does the background in the arena that look like that you're fighting in are there areas you can jump in you know it's just that same 15 seconds over and over and over again and max Payne kind of does that in a very simple way with with that slow-mo lunge that just just feels so great to do every single time um so i really like the the max Payne for series for that so if you could find a way to capture that if that's the the the, the reality of your of your game dev situation when it comes to being able to put something together then i think that's that's a perfect place to start um but yeah for a third person shooter uh control had some cool ideas that uh i don't think would be that too hard to implement the launch ability was probably the hardest one grabbing items with uh your telekinetic powers that probably was really hard to get working properly but maybe not maybe i'm, I'm overestimating that uh but the like the the shield and and like the mechanics of that of being able to throw and everything like um, it might not look as flashy but that that seems like a pretty simple system to me and, and the game didn't capitalize on that nearly as much so yeah I, I would focus on trying to make if, if you're looking for combat you said it's like a quarter of your game well depending on how long your game is if your game is 20 hours you know that's 
that's five hours of, of, of content where you're in combat. So that's not too bad, actually. You know, that doesn't have to be super, super refined. You know, so a lot of people can put up with, say, average combat for, for five hours. You know, it's not too bad of a problem. But if your game is supposed to be longer than that, or if it's supposed to be um, something that you can replay uh, over and over and over again, then you should try to make that as, as good as you possibly can. You should try to make it as good as you possibly can anyway. You know what I mean? But um, try and find like like a simple gameplay hook that's really elegant and, and works well. And uh, unfortunately, I can't give you any examples because uh, I want to keep them all for myself. No, because if like it's it's the million dollar question, you know what I mean? Like th those ideas are, are are difficult to come up with because if they were easy, they would have already been made. Um, but if you're struggling for some ideas, I hardly recommend going into some game jams uh participating in game jams or just just play game jam games to see what people are are, are just throwing at the wall to see what sticks there's some really cool ideas in a lot of different game jams that you can see and uh take your own spit on it and see what you can think of it you're still you still with us Lily? i'm still here you're still here you're hanging on don't ask me to paraphrase what you just said okay or, but you know i'm still here what's new pussycat whoa what's new pussycat movies and, and games but yeah that's uh that's definitely part of it guppy's tail and cursed and guppy's paw soul converter all right i don't know what these are but we'll, we're just gonna keep them 100 agree my friend had to fight tooth and nail for free cosmetics in a multiplayer game what <laughs> penny whoa what the hell's going on here now we have penny tears this game's weird man this game's weird God, they had to fight for free cosmetics. I mean, I, I, I feel, I understand why they are the way they are, but at the same time, it's just, I think, I think people, most, most consumers, including myself, don't understand the, the pressure of, um, that some, and it's usually the, the good employers can be under when it comes to making sure that they can keep their people employed, uh, especially when, you know, like, you hear stories about layoffs and you hear these horrible stories about how you know like the people who are laying them off make it all about them this is such a horrible day for me i hate laying people off and it's like yeah like like shut the fuck up dude this isn't the time and place to, to complain about this like I, I understand it is a it is a bad thing like it's it's emotionally draining but you know it's not the worst day for you today it's the worst day for someone else but at the same time like it, it, you can't deny that it like they don't most of them unless they're psychopaths don't enjoy doing that thing so they they there is this pressure to be sure you know like where we don't have to fire people and i know that ga game dev is kind of in a maybe not that as as um nice as i'm making it out to be or thinking it out to be i feel like it's gotten better but there used to be layoffs a lot more often you know you'd make the game and then just dump all the devs and then that's the end of it you know um, but I, I feel like there, there is pressure to keep the company going and, and growing, not just for, you know, the, the shareholders and investors and everything, but it's also for the, the employees that you have and you, you don't want to have to let them down. And so let's, let's make sure that we have as much money as we possibly can. I think a lot of devs that, that aren't in charge of those decisions get, get invested in that too, you know, and you, you hear stuff, I think it was like Bungie and stuff where there, there are like low level devs and by low level devs, I mean like they have no, no say in financial decisions at all and there some of them are, are saying like hey we should have more microtransactions and honestly i i just wonder if it's something about something about world of warcraft it all always comes back to world of warcraft for me and that's because um oh we just wasted that uh and that's because like can you really blame blizzard for the way that they've gone with with uh monetizing their games lately when you have people dropping like the like the entire asking price of full games on stupid cosmetic mounts and battle pets and you know like realm changes and transfers and everything like can you really blame them for being like you know what it's not worth it to make these big games anymore and we should try and nickel and dime a little bit more than that like unfortunately they are cashing in integrity for money when it comes to these things but i i can't i can't blame other devs from like looking at that and wanting a piece of that pie you know what i mean like i i really can't so hats on team fortress 2 as well for for gambling cosmetics yeah like i i think that many gamers have proven that they're they're really dumb with their money when it comes to com comes to video games and you know it feels really trashy when there's a lot of devs that uh that try to take advantage of it but like i really i really can't blame them sometimes it's like yeah 
you know, it's it's misguided, but you know, I I can see where they're coming from. It's just yeah. And then you and then you have people that that will defend the practices too when it's a company that they like, and you know, like uh, the whole Devil May Cry Five thing. And like I understand, like it, it it wasn't done all that that poorly, and it turned out that it was fine. And we most of us understood that it was going to turn out fine as we were criticizing it. But you know, it's that idea of boiling the frog again. You know, you normalize this behavior that Devil May Cry Five did, which was selling red orbs, uh, which is like the experience system in that game. You know, and. And you know, like you, you keep normalizing it, normalizing it, normalizing it, and then all of a sudden, you know, like we're at this place where people are looking back and thinking, "Wow, Bethesda Oblivion Horse Armor was actually one of the better DLCs that was ever made," and people hated that at the when it when it was first out. You know, like Bethesda even back then on the forefront of trying to 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 dick more money out of its uh, out of its audience. A lot of streamers are done with the money, are they? Was that some shade? Maybe I don't know. I don't think I'm dumb. <laughs> With my money, at least. <laughs> what would it take for you to quit gaming forever, apart from a physical impediment? I mean, there are lots and lots and lots of things that we could do if we're going into, if we're going into theory. Like, if, if, you know, there was some, like, mastermind kind of bullshit, you know, like, if you don't stop gaming, I'm going to kill your kids or whatever. Not Lily, though. I would still keep on gaming for that. Um, you know, like... <laughs> uh, love you, too. Love you, too, yeah friends till the end uh or like like the the world is gonna end unless you stop gaming you know so uh so there are definitely there are definitely things i could do that but anything like more like down to earth something something that's more possible i don't know um i guess if i realized that i was addicted to it and i had some sort of problem that was making it so i couldn't function anymore yeah that for sure would be enough for me to stop because anything can be like drinking right uh, someone said that to me once and I've never forgotten it. Like anything can be like drinking. You know, everyone looks at, at drinking as the big destructive addiction, but like anything, playing poker, playing video games, you know, going going jogging, even something that's that's healthy for you overall can become this uh, addiction that uh, you really need to work past and you need to realize that it's bad for you. I think it's one of the sayings that the Buddha has is that the path to true enlightenment or true success is realizing what's holding you back. It's not so much making the changes, it's actually being able to realize what it is that is causing all the problems. So yeah, that would do it for sure. I don't think there's any amount of realistic money that could be offered to me to stop. Like, if it was like so much more money in the world that I could solve a lot of problems that I think are active in the world, then maybe, you know what I mean? But like, I don't think there's any amount of money that'd be like, yeah, I'm done gaming now, yeah. I guess in theory, gaming's reputation could get so low that, you know, like, I, I don't even, even then, like, fuck it, I would be like, screw it, this is, like, fuck you if people think that it's really, really bad and, you know, only degenerates play games, I still enjoy them, that's not gonna sway me, so even then I don't think so, yeah, I can't think of anything, sorry, I, I don't have a really interesting answer for you, Harley, I'm sorry. Trick question, will you stop gaming if somebody offers you to get a Lily clone? Or will you stop gaming to not be given a Lily clone? <laughs> I get, I get two Lilies? Huh. Hmm. Mm. No, I like the Lily I have. He has to say that. I like the Lily I have. I'm, I'm going to uh, Epic Matrix dodge that one. Two, two <laughs> Double cosplays. The Double the kids. <laughs> Lily harem. Game feel by Steve Zvink. Uh, so that finally came back in print and I got it a while ago. Um, and it's a little hard to follow without much animation knowledge. But maybe I'm just being dumb. But... It also has some uh, gaming examples, like you can actually go to games and follow along that I couldn't get working, so I don't know if they're fixed or when I tried I couldn't get them working. So that's a, probably one of the best, maybe if it's even the only good game design book that there is. So I'd recommend that quite a bit. And it talks about the importance of game feel, uh, which is surprising that that's like maybe the first really important textbook for games, considering that game feel is such an intangible sort of topic. And a lot of people don't really understand it, even though they can feel it, you know, no pun intended, you know, like it's, it's arguably the most important part of any game, I think. Good game feel can can elevate a bad game to playable status and bad game feel can drop a bad game down to like, you know, I can really understand why people like it and I can understand the appeal of this, but holy shit, I just cannot stand playing this game. Uh, so it's like just the most important thing to nail in your game, I think. But you know, that's kind of 
reductive to say that it is the most important thing when if your game is really good really into story then you know story should be the most important thing too like you could say that for anything you can make a good argument but i really like skyrim even though when i think about it it feels like i shouldn't well skyrim has fairly good game feel especially sorry to to go on about this but this this is part of the video too especially compared to, to witcher 3 you know what i mean witcher 3 has has better combat than Skyrim. It's I, I think it's close to undeniable that Witcher 3 has better combat than Skyrim, but Skyrim is probably the game I would prefer to play more in terms of the combat because it has better game feel. That's a really good way of explaining the importance of game feel. It's something I talk about in the video actually. I'm a little bit worried about that point. I feel like people aren't going to understand that. I'm going to have to really make sure that I explain that well. Can everything be art? I think there is no solid definition for art at the moment yeah i it, that's what i used to say when they were having our games art debate it's like okay like you guys are raging you know and having all these arguments about what is and what isn't art and it's like first of all you should you should decide you know like what even constitutes art you know like games can't can't be art or can can't not be art if we don't have a solid definition for art and it's weird like games definitely contain art it's undeniable but it's like the way I looked at it was always a, a tour of a museum, like a guided tour of a museum that someone puts work into. Like they've they've thought about it for a long time. They're like, okay, I, I think that the flow of all the exhibits that we have are best done in this order. And I'm gonna take them on this, this guided tour and explain it in this way as we come to each part of the ex exhibition. It's like, okay, well, a tour of a museum absolutely contains art, it's undeniable, but is the tour itself art? Can, can, the, can a guided tour of a museum be art? And it's like, I don't know. And that's kind of what the game is, right? The, the game structure is a guided tour through the game's art. And it's like, I don't know. Mm. But I would say that most of, the, most of the time that almost anything could be art, yeah. Black Panther is actually a good example to this discussion. The reason it is now the fourth highest grossing film in North America ever is because it managed to hit on so many themes that resonate with the culture of the now and the quality didn't really didn't, really didn't matter as, as long as it was passable. See, when you say it like that, I'm like, okay, then maybe it does deserve Best Picture, you know? Like if it spoke to that many people, isn't isn't that all it has to do? Isn't that all it has to be? You know, like on some level, sure there, there are many ways to judge art, but maybe it deserves it. Like I, I did not enjoy that movie much at all. I, I felt it was a really bad movie, but when you say it like that, hey, I guess so. I, I wanna say like, I don't know how I feel about um, public opinion being something that decides what's considered great and what isn't, but that, that, that that's all there is, isn't there? That's all there can be. There can be nothing else. Although, like, that, that's getting dangerously into the topic of are, are some people's opinions worth more than others when it comes to, to media? And I would say, I would say kind of, yeah. I would say that someone who's devoted their entire life to, to, to studying, a, uh, like, a medium of art, I kind of feel like maybe their opinion worth more than others. And this has come from someone who has devoted a significant amount of his time to, to studying video games. I wouldn't say it applies to me because I haven't put enough work in. I just like to talk about it and, and, and put out what I feel. But like someone who's like spent 30 years studying film and like consuming a shit ton of film content and, and thinking about it and writing about it and putting all that time in, I kind of feel like I, I, their opinion should be worth a little bit more than some 10 year old who just watched Frozen for the first time. Like. I, I feel pretty confident in that argument, so, yeah. That's not how the Academy Awards work, as a little to the public opinion. Well, the, the, the premise we're going on right now is that uh, if the public cries enough for something, then, then usually it gets some recognition. Would you like it if I said I rediscovered a game thanks to your videos? Your Uncharted Plus Last of Us video got me to revisit the latter, and I found a great deal more to love than when I first played it. Yeah, that, that, that's a pretty good comment. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's much nicer and a, and a better thing to hear than someone saying, thanks thanks to your video, I now don't like this game anymore. Like, that's always kind of a kick in the balls. It's like, oh man, that's that's really not the reason why I do these, you know? Like, even with something that that I'm so far away from, from public opinion on, like like Odyssey and Silent Hill 2, like the, there was someone who left a comment on, on one of the videos, uh, one of the Silent Hill 2 streams, I think, and said something like, you know, uh, watching the stream has made me realize a, a couple of flaws that I was in this game that I wasn't aware of before So thanks for that. And I was like, oh man, like I, I like Like I, I hope that you still really really like it and you're just kind of like 
you, you just feel like you're more secure in what you think about this game now and not like oh now i don't like this because of your stream like that that's the uh, same with odyssey too you know like that's always kind of like a kick in the balls what is your opinion on playing the game wrong? How much responsibility relies on the developer to make sure the player plays the game right versus making their own fun with more open-ended games? There have been games which I've played wrong before and disliked, but after I figured out how to actually play the game, I've had a much better time. I imagine as a streamer, you're quite used to chat telling you that you're playing the game wrong. Yeah, uh, I'm actually going through that with a game right now that I can't say just yet, but yeah, um, it is possible to play a game wrong. It's possible to not click with a game for a lot of reasons. Uh, one of the games that was like that for me which should be surprising for a lot of you or maybe not because this game is kind of known for that uh is dark souls um dark souls is a game that when i first played it i really didn't like it i was like wow this game is clunky as shit and and uh what the fuck why does everyone like this game so much it's so so clunky that was the, that was the word just over and over again clunk 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 um so i definitely feel you and i definitely understand like and it's 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 inarguable to me that you can play a game wrong like it's you can't argue it. The example that I did is, is that you know I make it a joke, but it's real true. Is that you know there was there was once there was once a boy that that had a father, and um, this father decided that you know because he was a big Star Trek fan that he was gonna play Elite Force Two for PC, and this father continued playing it, telling his son that he was having a good time, and then one day the father got stuck, and asked his son for help. He couldn't make a jump in one of the later levels. So the son went into the room, went over to his keyboard, and hit caps lock so that he wasn't so the father wasn't slow walking through the whole entire game anymore, and now he was able to make the jump. And maybe that was me, and maybe I was the son, and maybe that was my dad. But yeah. So it's definitely possible to play a game wrong for sure, but yeah. But that's kind of like a shitty way of taking your question, right? It's like like that's just not understanding the tutorial. But you did mention tutorials in there. As a game designer, you definitely have you have a, a hard you know task ahead of you to to make sure that you are uh, tutorializing your game without over tutorializing your game. I don't know what what the right thing to do is there. I don't know if what's better to over tutorialize or under tutorialize. I guess my answer is that you can do both because you can just make it all options, right? You just need to make it like a toggle or an, or an optional thing. And if someone gets gets, you know, stuck at some point or they get angry, then they can just be like, okay, well, you should have done the tutorial. But then like, I'm pretty sure that in the example with my dad that it probably did give him a tutorial and he just didn't see it and now he's having a bad time and whether it's that person's fault or not you don't want your player to have a bad time so i guess you err on the side of like no one left behind i don't know i don't know it's it's a really really tough question yeah i veer dangerously close sometimes to playing a game wrong like you could argue that right i'm doing it right now with code vein like i'm not using the spells and abilities that you get for it and my answer to that is that I think you can only play a game wrong if you're having a bad time because of the choices that you're making or because of your ignorance. If you're ignorant to a mechanic, but you're still having a good time, and then you might even have a better time later when you finally do realize the mechanic, like, and you can even have like a, like a special second playthrough, you know, like now that you, now that you're aware of that mechanic and you might be able to get two playthroughs out of the game instead of one, you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like that needs to be the, what's considered is that it's only wrong if it's diminishing the experience greatly for you. Yeah. We were kind of discussing this while we were playing Code Vein, and um, we were talking about how uh, creator intentions are really important. And someone said something about how, like, th what about games, though? You know, like, and they took, they took, they made a joke about the fact that I was ignoring part of the game, which was very well deserved, because um, we were talking about movies before then. And I, and I kind of, I kind of spaced out, and I should have said, and I forgot to say this. Like, you make your own fun in, in, in games, so you go for it. Like, if whatever you want to do, like that, it's they're all the tools to make it an enjoyable experience. But like, if ignore, ignoring part of something in a movie does the same way for you, or even a book, then go for it. That, that's fine too. There, there are no rules. I think that there should always be this kind of development per intention, uh, intention thought in your head for when it comes to enjoying things on that level, but there's this whole other experience that's 100% valid and may even be more enjoyable for a lot of people, which is like, yeah, make whatever you want of it. It doesn't really matter. Go for it. Are there any genres, subgenres of video games that you have a soft spot for? That for a game of that genre, it's more easy for you to like, even if it's not so good or it flaws, its flaws bother you less than in another type of game would? 
Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I think the obvious one would be any any Souls like. I'll, I'll look into almost anything like that. Uh, however, I did try to play Lords of the Fallen. I think it's Lords of the Fallen, right? The one that the, the deck 13 made before Surge. Uh, I get confused between Lords of the Fallen and Bound by Flame. Um, I, I think it's Lords of the Fallen. Uh, I did try to play that and I was like, I can't, I can't stand this. So I'd like to try it again sometime, but yeah. Um, so there is, there is a certain level of jank that can make me not tolerate it right from the start. Um, but yeah, I, I'm interested in that kind of, kind of structure. So I'll look into games that are like that much more readily. And, um, I'm not sure if I'm like more forgiving, but I, I'm of flaws, but I'm more willing to tolerate them in order to play the game. Whereas lately I'm, I'm finding pretty recently, actually, maybe in the last year, maybe two, I don't know. Like I, I I'm losing track of time. It's, it's really difficult to keep the track of passage of time. Uh, not just because of just all the video work, but also just because of becoming a father and everything. It's just like, you know, like holy shit, how, where's the time going? Um, but I'm finding it like I'm much more willing to just be like, if, if a game doesn't grab me pretty soon, I'm just like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that that's probably a bad change, but... Yeah, anyway, I try not to. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I end up trying a lot of games for just a little bit. Whereas if I play for a couple hours, I'll usually finish. Uh, at least that's how I seem to seem to remember it anyway. Uh, I also have a soft spot for games like like uh, management games that are unusual. So anything like Dungeon Keeper, I'll give a try. But those games are usually a big time investment, and I don't really have that that much time to go and investigate like all, all the different games in that genre that have come out but i'm really interested in them like uh i haven't played dungeons two and three okay so i should probably explain so dungeons is a series by uh i think calypso made it and there's dungeons one dungeons two dungeons three dungeons one is not like dungeon keeper dungeons one is a management game where you're basically a, a keeping a dungeon that's like a theme park that you're, you're basically trying to build a good dungeon experience for the hero that's going to come in and, and, and raid your dungeon. It's almost like you're, you're maybe not even like it's you are complicit to it, like you're trying to facilitate that. And at least I, I never played it, so that's just the impression I got from someone telling me or, or reading the reviews. Whereas in Dungeons 2, you are actually playing a game like Dungeon Keeper and same with Dungeons 3. And I have had time to play those. I, I play War for the Overworld and I'm willing to overlook a lot of flaws in those types of games just because I really like the experience. The, the, the original Dungeon Keeper really means a lot to me. Um, I want to say that I have a soft spot for City Builders, but I actually don't think I do. I'm, pr I'm pretty quick to just put a city builder down uh my gold standard for city builders now is probably anno 2070. Uh, i don't really like the city builders that are heavy into this onto the simulation side of things um i just i find it kind of boring i want there to be more of a game i don't necessarily need there to be overt goals but i definitely need there to be some sort of gamified part of it and the trade um, the trade routes and the production cycles of the Anno series are something I really like. Uh, but then I just recently tried to play the, the new one, uh, Anno 1800, um, and uh, I didn't really like it. I was finding it kind of boring. I was like, huh. So I don't know if there's, it just, it just wasn't enough on the islands or the way it was presented to me or something, or maybe it's just because there's this, there's this like voice in the back of my head that's like saying the whole entire time, hey, you don't have time to, to play this right now. So no matter what, if you, even if you get invested, it's not going to matter. So maybe it's just, maybe it's just that, but I, I wasn't really taking to it all that well. It also ran like shit and, um, like this isn't this isn't a brag because it's it's for work it's for rendering streams and uh, and the huge 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 videos that we make. Uh, my computer is like f fucking like baller as fuck, you know, to to use the really polite term. So like any game that struggles on it, uh, even when it's not maxed out, is just immediately gonna make me get really pissed off. So uh, yeah, it didn't run all that well, but maybe they've improved it since then. So I was a little bit a little bit disappointed in that. Um, so yeah, I think maybe that's an example of the opposite where I'm, I'm a bit more demanding, surprisingly. I thought for sure it wouldn't be that way, but huh. Uh, I think I'm also a lot more willing to forgive games that are trying to do something new and 
are I you know it's it's a lot easier to look at a game and think okay well they're trying to do something and it's going to be difficult and it's going to be flawed but hey it's it's a it's a novelty it's trying to be somewhat of a unique experience you know that's that's something that I am that I'm more willing to overlook um, but also when because you're asking specifically about genres uh, when genres are combined I really like it when games take that risk and try to try to mix and match different genres I, th I find that really uh really enthralling and it's really hard to pull off uh so something like act razor uh there was that that game that tried to be act razor recently that apparently was really really bad maybe we should try that on one of the q a streams because i don't think that's a that's a good mainstream uh game but i think we might want to check that out uh, I can never remember what it's called, but someone in chat always knows, so hopefully they can they can answer that for me, what that game is called. And um, I think it was released by Sega. And yeah, so any any time that a developer tries to, um, to, to mix and match genres, I think that's really fun. And if I ever get a chance to make a few games, I would really like to try that myself, with mixing and matching genres. Yeah, I think that's about it. Becoming more of a monk than I this time passes, huh? That's about it. I wish you know it. Time to leave. Pack. Let's go. Call the stream. Some type of game or saga that you would like to see revived. Personally, I really loved survival horror games and I think that no one does them as much or as they used to be in the late 90s, early 2000s. So there seems to be somewhat of a resurgence of that happening. I was really surprised to see that there was a an, like it looked like an indie or a double a attempt at that which was some some game that i mentioned on stream that people said apparently was pretty bad but uh if, if you if it's if it's a genre that you really like you might want to check it out it was um something something 1998 daymare 1998 so it's like nightmare only it's daymare uh, I saw some reviews on youtube and it seemed to be quite mixed right now it has a mostly positive on steam um, so you might want to look at, at Daymare 1998, and I, I don't think that's probably going to be like, hey, that's a great game for anyone, but if that's specifically the type of game that you that you like, you might want to check that out. Uh, there are also some some PlayStation 1 era kind of survival horror games that are coming out from the indie scene as well. Uh, I don't remember their names, sorry, so you might have to just like give it a couple of Googles and you might find them on Twitter. But I remember seeing some that it looked like someone was trying to make their own Silent Hill and another one looked like it, it really looked like the Resident Evil mansion from, from Resident Evil 1. And I was really surprised that uh, that was a... Uh, that, that was a thing so uh there seems to be somewhat of a resurgence of that happening at the moment so you might want to look into it because you might be surprised um they're not my favorite although there's something nostalgic about them which i'm surprised about you know there's th those were games that a lot of people played when when i was when i was a teenager and i remember thinking that uh i was very very scared of them back then you know like it, it was something way out of my comfort zone and i wasn't really uh, into into horror and horror movies specifically, you know, I had a really bad experience early on in my life when it came to to horror movies, uh, which sounds a lot worse than it was. It's just that I was exposed to horror movies way too young, and uh, they they really scared me. And I got almost like a like a complex about them for a little bit that I didn't get over until um, maybe early twenties. I can't really remember. Uh, so I was I was um, quite quite put off by by horror movies and horror games because of that. Um, I would say that Resident Evil was was like the, the pinnacle of that. Seeing the, the first zombie show up and it was very, very creepy. And it just seeing clips and people playing Silent Hill back then really, really scared me. Um, but obviously, you know, uh, got over that specifically even more for games later on. But yeah, I would look into it and see, yeah. And maybe there's, there's uh, more games than you think right now. Uh, I don't know if something like Paratopic counts. I've seen people talking about Paratopic, and there was that uh, first-person horror game that Pyrocynical did a, um, a video on. I remember, I remember thinking that looked really interesting, but I don't know if that counts as what you're what you're going for. Uh, but anyway, a, a series or a genre that I would like to see revived. I would really like to see because it's just my favorite game. I would really like to see Chrono Trigger come back and have and have another game in that series. I don't think I would like Chrono Trigger to come back like. Hey, it's the new Final Fantasy because I think that could go poorly. But maybe Chrono Trigger was just a, a you know product of, of accidental you know bliss, 
uh, that they had just that great team working on that. They used to call that the dream team because they had so many great people working on that from other games. And uh, even Chrono Cross was already kind of like, huh, I know some people prefer Chrono Cross to, to trigger. And I don't know if I'm one of them because I haven't played Chrono Cross in a long, long time. But I, uh, I, um, I did not enjoy Chrono Cross nearly as much as Trigger when I first played it. It seemed to be getting into that um, period where, it, like maybe one of the first ones where around like Final Fantasy VII time, where JRPGs were starting to just get absolutely fucking insane. Is that fair to say? I think it is, right? Like the, there, there was this period where. Like before, like our, our JRPGs were like, you know, they were all right. Like they, they did have some wacky story moments and everything. But then there was this period around Final Fantasy VII where like the, the stories just were like, OK, we're just going balls to the wall, kind of like every, every single time at the end, we're killing God. And, you know, there's, it's, it's this global fucked up animation, you know, like I guess maybe it's not anime. I'm, I'm still not really all that familiar on what is or what isn't anime. But to me, it seems right looking back and saying, hey, yeah, this is pretty fucking anime. But then Chrono Trigger has that same kind of global kind of where we're killing like a godlike -like, god -like entity kind of thing. But it just doesn't seem as nuts as as Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, um, Xenoblade, all that things. So I don't know. Killing God with Power of Friendship. Yeah, that sort of thing. Dragon Quest us on the NES. Like pretty much anything on Super Nintendo. Secret of Mana. Secret of Mana gets kind of crazy. Hmm. Maybe, maybe it was always like that. Um, I think if I had to pick something, like most most of the games and genres that I really liked when I was a kid have have continued. Like I spoke about Dungeon Keeper a little bit, but I'm not sure if I want that to have a resurgence or if I just want that to have like a, a worthy successor, you know? Like something like the, the next Evil Genius game or whatever. Like that, that's, that's already kind of happening for me. Uh, but I think I would enjoy seeing more games like, like CrossCode and, and Top Down Zeldas, but that's kind of happening too. Uh, maybe more games that are like the 3D Zeldas as well. I don't think there are many games that try to do that, right? I wonder why. It seems to be that there's, I'm seeing a lot more indie devs trying to do the top-down indie Zelda sort of thing. You know, like we're playing one right now, arguably. Uh, it's a lot more difficult to do that than, than a side-scroller because of the amount of different sprites you need for the pixel art. Um, but that depends on your art style as well. But like, I don't really think, has there ever been an indie 3D Zelda? I'm not sure. And apart from like Okami, I think someone in chat just said Okami as well. Apart from Okami or Okami, because Okami sounds like, you know, an ode to Stalin, right? Like, like what's what's the correct pronunciation there? Like apart from that, has there been like a, a big 3D Zelda? Hmm. Hob is basically 2D. Yeah, Hob is basically 2D perspective, yeah. Hob was all right. Hob was kind of heartbreaking. It's Okami? Okay. Darksiders. Yeah, Darksiders. I haven't played Darksiders, so yeah. That, that's probably one of them, yeah. So I think that I would like to see more games like that. You know, there's a lot of racing games. I'm not really into Space Sims. Uh, JRPGs get plenty. I guess maybe I would like to see more... I'd like to see more grounded JRPGs. More, more JRPGs like the ones that I grew up with, you know? I think maybe I'm just done with JRPGs. Like, the gameplay just, just isn't for me anymore. You know, but like I still haven't played um I am Setsuna, that's it, thank you. Yeah, I haven't played that. Maybe that's more what I'm talking about right now. Or um Octopath Traveler. I haven't played that either, but maybe maybe I already am maybe it already exists what I want, but I just haven't gotten to gotten around to it yet. But yeah, I think I think that's it. Like old school shooters have been getting a bit of a resurgence right now. Um, but I wasn't really into them. Uh, Forex games are pretty healthy. Uh, yeah, so it's like a, a new a new Dungeon Keeper thing, maybe a, a Chrono Trigger resurgence. But I would be very wary of you know, hey, we're we're gonna make a big series out of this. And it's like okay, well they're gonna they're gonna mess this up, you know what I mean? Um, so I would be a bit scared of that. But yeah, I think that's that's my answer for now. Sorry. Grew up playing JRPGs, Legend of Dragoon, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy X. I really didn't like Final Fantasy X. I would say that Final Fantasy VII 
Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX, it's like a progression of the kind of crazy where it's starting to lose me a little bit, you know, with each one. Final Fantasy VIII is my favorite 3D Final Fantasy just because I was able to play it on my own. Final Fantasy VII would probably be my favorite 3D Final Fantasy, but that's a game I only played like, like I watched my friends play because I didn't have a PlayStation at the time. But like with each one of them, it, it starts to get progressively more batshit. And by Final Fantasy X, I think the series had completely lost me. And like Final Fantasy used to be my, my favorite series. Like I, I can't, I can't overstate that enough. Like a, like Final Fantasy used to be like, I'm going to play every single game in the series as it comes out forever. You know, it's my favorite thing. And you know, Final Fantasy X was like, oh man, it's in 3D. This is so cool. And, and uh, you know, I really wish I had a PlayStation to play it myself. And, and I didn't. And then Final Fantasy VIII, you know, I finally had a PlayStation and I was like, okay, I get to play this one by myself. And it was like, yeah, it was like a really good experience. And, but it was kind of like, hmm, this is a bit weird. And it's, it's kind of different, but okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still enjoying it. And then Final Fantasy IX came out and I was like, eh, it's kind of, kind of disappointing. You know, I don't like the main character and I don't like the story. And, you know, I'm kind of almost playing it just exclusively to see the, the really pretty cinematics at this point. And then Final Fantasy X came out and I was like, yeah, I'm done. I really did not like Final Fantasy X. So I think after that, I didn't even finish them. I don't think I finished the Final Fantasy after X. I don't even think I finished Final Fantasy X. No, I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I remember now. I did finish Final Fantasy X. Uh, I just didn't play the um, the spinoff, uh, the, the, the dance dress up Rockstar game. Um, Lily thinks I'm kidding, but it's not. And yeah, I didn't. I and I didn't finish a fantasy after that. Yeah, I was done. Hmm. Final Fantasy IX is the best out of all. It might have the best sort of overall tone, and maybe it has some of the best supporting characters. But I just, I hate the main character. I hate him so much. So that really put me off. I think maybe I would appreciate Van more now. I'm not sure who I would hate more, Van or Zidane. I'm not sure. The problem, I think Zidane's a really annoying character, but he's still the main character, like it's still about him. Whereas Van is less annoying, but it's not even his story. He's just along for the ride. He's the Van that they're taking with them, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, so that's how, that's how I remember Final Fantasy XII. So maybe that's why, but, um, I, I don't really remember Final Fantasy XII all that well. I just remember thinking that, why am I playing as this guy when I should be playing as uh, the Gruff Knight or, or Balthazar, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's one of those, right? Like, I, I, I didn't really take to it all that. Uh, but the presentation of Final Fantasy XII is great. It feels like Star Wars. I think maybe as a big stream event, I'm, I'm really toying with the idea of one day, we just, like, we just sit down and we're like, okay, so for the next, like, uh, for the next few months, maybe even a year, we're just gonna play every single Final Fantasy game. I think that would be a fun time. I think I would really enjoy that. And it would start off okay, because the earlier ones are pretty short, and then it would turn into this big, huge, long saga. But I think that would be fun. Is 10 the last one? Sorry? Is 10 the last one? Final Fantasy? Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's still going. I was gonna say, you start out good, and then you're bitching and bitching by the end, right? Yeah. I love that. It's it's still going. I think the, la the latest one was 15, right? Have they announced 16? There's that many? Well. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've heard of it, but I don't know how many there are. I just thought, because you mentioned 10 being so bad, right? That you didn't like it. That... Yeah, I really didn't like 10. 10 is some people's favorite. Is, is 12 or 13 or 15 anyone's favorite? Like, I can see the MMO being someone's favorite, but that doesn't really count. Like, or the MMOs. Um, those are different games, so I don't think those should count. But is, like, 13 anyone's favorite? 13 pretty bad. Hard mode for those streams. We'll do all the spin-offs too. The last one has the Backstreet Boys, Lily. I think they're still going too. It really does have the Backstreet Boys. Hmm. I recently finished Cross Code after hearing it's your game of the year. My only real criticism was with some of the enemy design, especially during the Skyscraper mission and the PvP. What are your thoughts on what it did badly or could have done better? So CrossCode was my game of the year for 2018. Uh, it was supposed to be a surprise in a 2018 best games video that uh, isn't isn't going to be made anytime soon because of uh, of Geralt. So um, I decided to to say it rather than sooner rather than later. So people because people kept asking like, hey, what was your game of the year? So CrossCode is a top-down Zelda-like game. And it's sort of like the best way to describe it is, is a Super Nintendo JRPG that has 
real-time combat that's actually good so secret of mana with combat that isn't kind of bland i wouldn't call secret of mana's combat awful but it's kind of eh same with secret of evermore it's disappointing in many ways and kind of clunky considering how simple it is or chrono trigger with a really really good real-time combat system although chrono trigger has a decent turn-based combat system for me at least and it has a kind of a similar presentation cross code is like one of the first times maybe it might even be the only time where i played a game and i felt like i was just 100 percent the target audience like just 100 like like no no way it, it was uh is this is this this is just made for me you know like this this the person who who made this or, or that, that was behind you know this this vision for this game had very similar game experiences to me growing up that was a uh, quite quite the experience because i don't think i've ever experienced that in a game before uh probably in a in a movie although i would struggle to think of one right now but like uh but yeah, I've never really experienced that in a game before. So that was like, like, wow, this is this is really special. This is what it's like to be the prettiest girl at the dance. So I was quite taken by it. And probably because of that, it's probably not as good as I think it is. It's just that, you know, with, with my bias and the kind of games that I like and grew up with, that it is something that I really, really took to. Uh, so I would say that it's flaws because I'm me. And of course I have criticisms of it are that, um, Okay, so I'm gonna try and keep the spoiler free. So some people might go and play this game or might be in the middle of playing this game because of, uh, because I, because I, I think so highly of it, which is surprising me because I, because I know that some people, like some people take my opinion, my opinions quite seriously, but uh, I've been surprised by how many people have gone on to play Crossco just because I said it was my game of the year 2018. Um, there's been a lot of people that have said to me, you know, on, on Discord, on questions, you know, on private messages, hey, I played this game because you said that and I really liked it. Thank you for telling me you know about it. I'm like, oh, wow, cool. All right. Um, so I would say that um, one of the biggest criticism I have are the special moves. The special moves are really flashy and they are very powerful and they feel good to use, especially the first tier of the of the melee attack ones and the first tier of the rank just the first tier in general actually uh and there's this really cool like uh building of of power moment as you hold down right trigger to trigger to to, to build these power up and, and then unleash them sort of things um however i think that they weren't worth the amount of time that went into making them because i can look at those special moves and i and i see months of work that went into all of these different special moves that could have been quite possibly one maybe even two more dungeons with another boss even if they just took away the, the later tiers of those special moves so this is a criticism that i don't usually say on and videos and things so i guess it's like it's 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 the stream special criticism because um because usually it's about it's about more so that's a bit more tangible, I guess, when I want to criticize something like that. But yeah, that that seems to me like it was it was a really bad uh, use of re use of resources. Sort of like how I think the only time I ever said something like this in a video was uh, I really wish that the, the the optional realms in God of War hadn't been made, and instead that there was so a little bit more meat in the main campaign of God of War 2018. They're good and they fit well into the game and they feel good to use. However, I, I really wish that the game had a little bit more to it in, in terms of the main content that uh, it didn't really need this. Um, I agree with you on some of the enemy designs, especially that area you are specifically talking about. That is like, I think the only time in the entire game apart from maybe, um, apart from the last boss where uh, I died more than more than twice on an encounter uh, was was that um, I, I think the difficulty in cross code is, is just about right it wasn't a game that was too hard it wasn't a game that was too easy I think there is a hard mode or there is a way to make it harder for yourself uh, it is it does have some some stat bullshit where you have to be at a certain level but the game tells you what level you should be like if you're too low of a level you don't have to guess like a character will just outright say hey you're too low level and it even makes sense it's it's something that isn't even that you have to like oh the game is breaking the fourth wall tell me this now the the way that cross code works is that it's it's setting is an MMO um, so it is not an MMO game it's a single-player game but it's set in in a fictional MMO in the future and every other character that you see that you can talk to and, and have a conversation back back and forth with uh, is another player another person playing uh, this fictional MMO so it's it's quite an interesting setting but apparently there was an anime uh, 
uh, sword fart online that did this so I think that maybe it was more of a unique setting to me but uh, I don't know what kind of setting that is but this was also a, a kind of like a sci-fi thing at the same time so I really I really enjoyed that kind of setting and it even built into this feeling that it was made just for me as well because it was sort of like going back to my teenage years when I would play MMOs like that and I would speak to people so even that contributed to it so I think that even though it is a stat based and the levels are important it does it all right and you can still get your way through by being under level but I don't think cross code is a kind of game you can beat at level one i think you have to level up i tried for a bit to get through the game without leveling up or i would only level up on the on the encounters that um i had to to fight you know there's a way of playing i think final fantasy 6 like that where you run away from every single um encounter and uh how far can you get and i think people have beaten the game by clever use of game mechanics and and items by never never leveling up in, in final fantasy apart from the the fights where it forces you to so i definitely agree that some of the enemies are kind of disappointing and that area specifically that you're talking about yeah that that was frustrating i i wasn't a big fan of that area there are these machine gun carrying bird enemies that were very difficult to 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 get right while you're trying to move all these boxes around in, in in an area and i feel like the combat system didn't didn't quite work all that well when it came to those ones so i was i was a little bit disappointed in that area but apart from that it was it was okay i would say also that the areas are a bit samey so there are well, some some are kind of retooled a little bit later. So let, let's say let's say there are six or seven, and although they are they're visually distinct and they they um, they're they're interesting and they're and they they're visually presented quite well, uh, their structure of them are very similar. So it kind of has that Hollow Knight problem where Hollow Knight doesn't have any slope surfaces. I speak about that in the video. I think it becomes across as very boxy. Uh, because they didn't do that, because it's probably easier to put the levels together. Crossco does not have that kind of like, hey, we had to make a concession, so this is what we did in order to make this work. It's not, it's not like what Hollow Knight did. It just that uh, the levels just kind of feel very, very similar in terms of overall structure and just how they've been arranged. It's not just a limit on the level builder that they had. It's just the same kind of cliffs and auto jumping puzzles and sort of mazes and it just kind of keeps doing that over and over and over again i think probably the last area has the biggest twist but by then it was kind of like yeah it, it, the color palette was a lot different in the last area but it was kind of like eh, this this feels a lot a lot closer to um every other area in the game so far so i would say that in, in theme too I, I guess um the theme of, of a lot of the areas in crosscoder are, are a bit a bit bland you know there's there's forest, desert, that sort of thing. Um, so that was a little disappointing. Um, apart from that though, I don't think I have anything else. The story was, I wouldn't call the story great, but I don't think it was really trying to tell like a really great story. It was just trying to try, trying to give like some emotional context and have some some decent moments. And they, there's some payoff with it too. There was, there's a really, really great moment. Um, I think maybe a little over halfway through uh, where a, a character like has has an anime power up moment that it was really fun and really cool and I really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, I don't think I have any other any other major criticism. That's it. Does anyone else play Crosscode in chat and agrees or disagrees with me? The main problem I had with Crosscode was that sometimes it was annoyingly difficult to tell what height which cliffs were at. Yeah, I had to adjust to that, but eventually I, I clicked with it and it was okay. So it's not something that really sticks to my memory, but you are right. Yeah, sometimes it is difficult to tell. I have it. I like it until some puzzles got annoying along. I see. I really like the puzzles in Crosscode. That was one of my favorite parts about it were the puzzles. They're difficult right from the start. I really like the puzzles. If Crosscode didn't have combat arts, would you want it to be replaced by something, or would you be just fine with combat without them? Uh, I think that I would like the maybe the first tier of combat arts because I did use them quite a lot. Like they they were they were useful. I just think that maybe it was a uh, it wasn't the best use of resources. I would have preferred to have maybe more more enemies or in another area or two or another dungeon or two. Because <clears throat> like um, there's so much work that goes into those things. Uh, like there, there's some of them I didn't even see because there's just there's just so many options when it comes to the combat arts. But I think I think I would like just some instead of just being like, hey, just get rid of them and and not have anything replace them. I think I would prefer just like have some of them just taken away so there are fewer of them so we can have like some compromise. Yeah. But I think the core the core combat of just dodging and aiming and um, switching between melee strikes and shooting is. Uh, 
and the elements as well is uh, just fine. Like that's enough in crosscode. Like maybe it could have something more to, to do with um, movement. Like if there was uh, some more about that. But um, uh, I only played it through once, I think. Did I play it twice? I played some of it twice, but I only played it through once. So I'd have to see when I, when I go through it again. Are we stuck in here? Well, shit, we just learned a lesson. Interesting. Joe, do fighting games appeal to you? Not really. Um, I, that's a new thing, huh? Going, sorry about that. That must be really annoying. I think that I could get into a fighting game, but it was never something I really enjoyed much when I was younger. And I think the only one I really got into was uh, Smash Bros. Melee. I kind of, I kind of get annoyed by. Um, anyway, I was gonna. The last thing I want to say about fighting games is, is, is a little bit. Uh, uh, I, I can't, I can't D word ish. I don't want to say it in front of. Uh, um, is that I kind of feel like a lot of fighting game enthusiasts are uh, elitist a holes. And yet we're fighting the monsters, and I'm not, I'm not really keen on becoming one of them. So I don't like. I understand that people like their genres and they really get into it, and I just I really dislike this this kind of perceived righteousness that fighting game fans have that their game series is the best game series. You know, fighting games are the purest and best genre that there is, and it's like, look, that might be the case for you, and I'm really really happy that you like them so much. But you know, like, just because you think that doesn't make it true. You know, like. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, that kind of puts me off a little bit. Anyway, to just briefly return back to the fighting game comment, uh, I know there are plenty of people who who love fighting games who aren't like that, and and they're fine with it. It's just the the general um, kind of uh, feeling I get from from fighting game enthusiasts is that they think that their their game is is the best game series. Um, to be fair though, I also to be fair, I also feel that way about Dark Souls. Uh, I feel like Dark Souls has kind of kind of eased off a little bit on that though. That over time, that's gotten better. Uh, maybe because there hasn't been a Dark Souls game in, in a while. You know, it ha hasn't really been that many Dark Souls games anymore, and it seems to be Dark Souls specifically. It didn't didn't really go over to the surge or anything. But I already got into Dark Souls bef before really realizing that about the community. Whereas fighting games, it seems to be like that all the time. But I think I would enjoy it if I got into it enough. What's your opinion about Shadow of the Colossus overall? SOTC is my best friend's favorite game of all time, and he really likes to watch your critiques and VODs, so I'm kind of dedicating this question to him. His name is Gustavo. Gustavo, is that how you say it? Or not, Gustavo, I'm not, not sure. Not Gustavo? I don't I don't speak. I think it's Portuguese probably speaks, Gustavo? Right? There was a comment train on, on Patreon saying, how is Joe going to butcher this name? <laughs> it might be Gustavo, but I, I, I want to say Gustavo. Um... Either way sounds nice, so... It's, it's Gustavo? 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 What did I say first? I don't know. <laughs> say the first one. I don't know. I apologize for butchering your name. I think it's a beautiful name, but I, I don't know how to say it. It looks nice. Gustavo. 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 Gustavo? Untitled Gust Gustavo? Anyway, well, we're having. We're, we're, Can we call him Sathian? We're having fun. <laughs> we're having fun. I played Shadow of the Colossus the remake uh, on stream, and I don't remember how much I spoke about it. But you might get something out of out of that. Like if you want to watch the vod, if you haven't already, uh, I, I can't remember how many of my how how well my thoughts were collected from from that. Um, I think it was okay. It was one of. It was a short stream. We got it done pretty quickly because I had uh, I had just recently played them um, before that. I think for the cancelled project that was about the Last Guardian, Eco, and um, Shadow of the Colossus. Um, Shadow of the Colossus is one of my favorite games. Okay, so the duality of man again. So I, I kind of want. I, for a long time, I've I've had this problem with having conflicting like like contradictory opinions and thoughts in my head, and for a long time I thought this was just something that was kind of like like I was a little bit crazy about it. But um, 
it's I, I've learned like in the last year or so that that's kind of kind of what humans can do. It's it's sort of thing. So I've mentioned this on stream a couple times actually. That um, being able to hold contradictory thoughts in our head is 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 something that's like unique to us and it's something that should be embraced and is, is actually a really good thing um so i kind of feel like the shadow of the colossus is underrated and overrated at the same time i would say that uh as a narrative it is it is overrated like the story of shadow of the colossus is overrated um but as a as an experience it's it's right on like it's it's not underrated or overrated it's a really 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 good experience um, and as a as a gameplay as a gameplay it's underrated i kind of feel like the gameplay in shadow colossus doesn't get as much credit as it deserves because a lot of people think it's clunky and it's and it's a little awkward to control and you know there's not not that much depth to it but i kind of feel like you can't it, it really builds into itself and um the gameplay is, is a really big part of part of that experience part that I think a lot of people appreciate, you know, like you are riding around fighting these huge things that are much, much larger than you. Um, and it's got like this, this lost wandering feel, this kind of somber feel. Um, and there's like, I don't think there's anything other else in, in games that captures that. What the fuck? That captures that feeling of like killing something or, or fighting something that is that much larger than you that still feels tangible and, and grounded you know there's parts in dragon's dogma um maybe kind of kind of monster hunter um you know th things like that you know but i kind of i think not kind of i i feel like shadow of the colossus does it does it the best with these things that are just so large but still feel um real apart from maybe the very last colossi or the last colossus i think it's the last colossus you wouldn't say the last colossi moose and meese um so i i feel like the gameplay has more more depth to it than most people realize the core of shadow colossus's gameplay is it's, it's a puzzle game you know it's not really an action game it's a puzzle game with 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 an action sort of movement interface um you are killing things and you are you are doing action climbing and everything but it's really the core of it is really just how do how do we um how do we figure out how to kill this thing and how do we get to to the weak point properly um it's probably not fair to call it just you know a puzzle game outright or you know definitely not exclusively a puzzle game but it's, it's it's mostly a puzzle game and i feel i feel pretty pretty uh pretty confident in that um but like managing your grip gauge and timing on like getting your your throws down properly like not your throws your i, I say throws because it's about launching yourself up like letting go of of the of the grip to, to to refill your bar and making sure that you're using those jumps appropriately like there's quite a lot of of, of hidden depth to that especially if you watch some speedrunners play the game now saying like pointing to speedrunners to show a game's depth can be kind of a trap when it comes to discussions because speedrunners often look like they're playing a whole other game that you're not playing but i think you can still take something from it even though um even though it shouldn't be like used as a like aha i win you know like I, like speedrunners can get this out of it so therefore it's like i've proven my point you know like it's not really the same game but at the same time you can still see some of the some of the things that speedrunners can get out of that game and you can teach yourself too um shadow classes has a hard mode that i think most people didn't play uh, it also has like time attack modes right and, and hidden like stuff for for getting um getting upgrades and weapons and stuff isn't it or upgrading the one sword i don't know i didn't i didn't go into that i did play hard mode but i didn't go into the, the time attack modes all that much so um i can't i, I can't comment too much on that uh, Isaac versus Krampus. Okay, cool. So I, I, I think that the the gameplay is underrated. The experience is, is just about right on. Like like people people think that's a great experience, and I 100% agree. Um, the issue where it gets kind of dicey is that all three of them are kind of meshed in together. Like gameplay reinforces the story, gameplay reinforces the experience, like, the experience reinforces the gameplay because like could you imagine? Um, could you imagine uh, Shadow Colossus's gameplay without those like those grandiose like sweeping music carrying you up in the sh in the sheer scale of, of the of the monsters that you're fighting and everything? Like the experience helps, but these also complement the story. Like it's one of those rare few games that 
um, all three of those sides, those major sides of, of games that I really go in for are all working together. But I kind of feel like the story is overrated and this is like the big one I want to end on because it's I feel like it's the, the most kind of like, huh, what the fuck are you talking about? Is that it's it's not bad it's fine it's just kind of like i've cooled on it significantly since i first seen since i first seen it because i feel like it's like yeah and you know what i mean like it's 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 good it's got this nice nice big punch moment but there's not much else to it after you get over that maybe it's kind of like what we we're speaking about earlier with twists because i wouldn't say it's uh, i guess it is a twist it is it is kind of a of a, a relevant relevatory moment but after you like get over it, it like it changes the context of when you play the game again and it's like yeah it's it's, it's fine it's definitely not bad but it's kind of like yeah it's all right you know what i mean like it's it's not it's not mind-blowing it is like the or, or the mind-blowing part that might happen at the end like doesn't really sustain and i really like it like don't get me wrong i just i just really don't think it's like the the best story in in, in a game or anything like that i don't think it actually is per, like put forward as the best story in games it's like it's just a, a really really solid part a really really good part of of a like an outstanding game that just really complements the rest of it without being like overbearing like this is the reason why you play this you know what i mean like it's it's just it's just really really good and um it's not the best part of the game but that also speaks to that just how good the rest of that game is i think um so yeah so that's 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 my kind of like complicated kind of rambly like the gameplay is underrated the experience is right on and the story is is overrated but only only a little bit i would say that the, the biggest difference i feel is that um the gameplay is you know like the story is only a little overrated and the but the gameplay is like really underrated i feel like people didn't really get that much of a chance and um hell i think maybe the frame rate on the original playstation 2 version like it's it, it blows me away that that was running on that um uh helped you know like people come to that conclusion you know what i mean like that that game did not run well and um that kind of brings the experience down. Even if you disagree, I hope that you I hope you get something out of it. And uh, I don't know if my thoughts are, are still the same from what I said on stream when I was streaming it, because uh, I, I change my mind on a lot of things all the time. Um, that's why I'm, I'm always I'm always worried that one day there's going to be like like a video of a bunch of clips of me saying I like apples, and then you know, and here's another clip of Joe saying he hates apples. It's like yeah, but like I change my mind quite a lot on things, and depending on the day I'm having, I might say something completely different. It's just kind of like, huh? Like I don't consider anything that I any any of the opinions that I have to be even like set in stone, and and I I try to be someone that's always learning and always trying to like learn new things. But yeah, if you, if you want to know some some more, actually just see me play the game. Yeah, that's uh, I think the. Um, the stream is on Twitch or it's on it's on YouTube. I think I beat I think it was like a four hour stream. Maybe it was a little shorter than that. Do you like Shadow of the Colossus, Lily? I think I did. Do you remember that game? I think it was very pretty, wasn't it? I'm trying to think. Yeah, right now. it's pretty. But you don't like The Last Guardian. Do you remember me playing that? Yeah. With the with the cat griffin thing? Yeah. Mostly because I was miserable playing that. Yeah. I don't like that game at all. Oh man, that game was really bad. I'm sorry if you really like that game. Like, d like, don't let my opinion matter to you at all. But like, I don't like that game. Yeah, I'm, it's like kind of vague now, but I do remember it. I was getting frustrated watching it. Was it that one or was it the first one? It was that one. It wasn't the first one. What's the one you were getting? Like, you were like, kind of beating your head against one part. I remember, and like, I was getting so frustrated watching you. That might have been Uncharted. That might have been remember a... the big that we were like in ruins or something? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're kind and of. And there was ruins. like a fence. There was like an iron fence. Iron fence. And like, you're trying to lead him places. Yeah. And I was getting so frustrated. Like, <laughs> I get frustrated watching you play games. Because like, like I said, I get frustrated when I play games, right? So like, watching you is like, when it's going well, I'm like, yeah, he's kicking ass. And then as soon as it's like, it gets hard, I'm like, oh my god. I get very frustrated. I get very on edge. 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 Like getting over it, I can't even handle. Oh, you hated getting over getting it. Getting over yeah. it, I'm mad. I remember you hated getting over it. Oh, man. 
I really like getting over it. I think that game is like legit good. It's not even ironically good. I'm very mad. I think that is a good game. The only way I will watch that game again is if you play it for New Year's again and there is multiple bottles of something <laughs> here that I will drink watching that game. It's the only way you're getting me to watch that one again. But yeah, that was, I think Shadow of the Colossus was very pretty, wasn't it? Yeah, wasn't it's, it's, very, it's, a, like, it's a pretty game, yeah. Sometimes they, they blend together a little bit for me. It's a pretty game. I like Celeste, but Celeste is hard. Celeste is, uh... Celeste has me on the edge of my seat. But in a good way. Like, I'm stressed out, but I, I'm liking it. Do, do, do. Finn liked watching you, uh, the Celeste, too. Did he? Yeah, the last time you streamed it, we watched part of the stream. And I was sitting there, like gripping the desk you know watching you dart through things and, and he kept asking what you were doing and what's that what's that he really liked I'd, it. I'd like to see him play celeste he should play one of like a, a proper mario probably a little too hard for him he gets a lot out he of um too, it's just he gets a lot out of uh the the infinite hover in crafted world's easy mode but he could probably be crafted world now without easy mode i should probably give him a new save file with that thought on sometimes he turns the easy mode off accidentally and, uh, yeah. You should try him on that or Donkey Kong or something again. I just remember before he didn't get- Donkey the, Kong is really he, hard, He though. didn't get the jumping part, remember? He just kind of kept walking into things and then, and then they would get him. I think- or he just stand there. <laughs> I think people forget, like, like, Donkey Kong is like two hits, you're out. You know, like, it's, that's, it's difficult. This question is in regards to Naughty Dog's games. Since Uncharted 1, all of their games have been seen as big hallmarks of good, great narrative. OST, art direction, visuals, etc., but were kind of lacking in the gameplay department. In other words, the gameplay side of their games never reached the same highs as these aspects. I don't know if you saw any of the newer The Last of Us Part 2 trailers that show gameplay, or if you'll want to watch them to answer this question, but considering what I saw, more mobility, more vert verticality and expansiveness in the level design, new stealth moves, addition of dodge and jump buttons, and a skill tree, plus smarter enemy AI, presence of dogs, presence of dogs, new types of infected enemies, etc. Do you think this could be the game where the studio finally achieves the goal of making their gameplay be as stellar as the story, atmosphere, tone, etc.? Uh, so don't feel bad about what I'm going to say. I, I'm not going to watch the trailer because I don't want to know. I don't want to see it. It's fine that you just said all those things because you're just telling me and so it's different if, if I, if I get, uh, if I, if I see it in, in a video. Um, so I'm okay with, uh, with, with hearing about it. Um, actually makes me a little, a little relieved because, um, because I saw the one trailer that when they announced the game, uh, or when they did the, the gameplay, the first gameplay reveal is the only gameplay trailer I've seen. And uh, it did not look good, man. It, it was like, okay, this just looks like The Last of Us. And I think The Last of Us has better gameplay than most people, but that's still like accepting a lot, you know? Like it's, uh, or tolerating tolerating a lot because of the, um, because of the story. So I think that um, what I saw, uh, Left me a little a little lukewarm because it didn't it didn't have any upgrades that I was hoping to see um, I think that you're right and that uncharted definitely does not have the this night dog games definitely don't have great gameplay um, I would say that they are uh, You know, they're, they're a lot more about the, the set piece and, and having the great the great action. You know, like I, I think I spoke about that too much in, in, in the videos, um, that the, the big long video. <clears throat> but I think Uncharted 4 is, has good gameplay. I would say that Uncharted 1 has bad gameplay, like it's just outright bad. Um, Uncharted 2 has, has, um, has all right gameplay. You know, it's more about facilitating the big set piece and the big action movie stuff. Uh, and Charter 3 around the same way. It's, it's just like, it's all right. It's not, it's not, it's not bad. It's just not, it's just not great. But then we get into uh, Uncharted 4, which I think where they finally put enough into it that I would consider that game to, to be um, good, uh, but probably not great. Uh, I don't know what would have to happen for, for uh, Uncharted 4's gameplay to to get there i think it would probably be um i think i said this in the video too it would probably have to be 
a a kind of like doom because i really like the movement options in uncharted 4 especially with with the hook shot and everything but i feel like you rarely have to do it it just it's it's just like they they took the the basic cover shooter that they had and just added this bill extra bit to it and i think that needing to to dodge enemy gunfire um in in like actual projectiles way instead of just um so in cover shooters that have hit scan bullets you're basically just avoiding areas that can you that can do damage to you so you can view the whole entire um level that isn't behind cover as just red and at, when you are in the red um you are overwhelmingly likely to be just be taking like uh, a dot on you like damage over time and you you have a timer until you can get back behind cover and that's it you know like it doesn't really matter what your movement is uh, enemies are gonna just gonna lock onto you and they're just gonna fill you with fill you with damage until you deplete that time that you can be active and then you have to go back behind a cover wait for that timer to, to refill and then you can go back out again and just hope that you don't spend too much time outside uh, sometimes you can kind of finagle your way through taking less damage by like dodge rolling through some some areas that have cover or maybe shooting an enemy to stagger them that sort of thing so like it, there definitely is a little bit more to it it's like my description is overly simplistic but i think i would prefer something where you are taking a more active role in in dodging um enemy fire while you are uh, out there depleting depleting that supposed timer i don't know if you could have a game like doom that still had regenerative health Maybe there is one and I don't know about it. I wonder what that would be like. I wonder if you could have like a mix of hit scan and and um, and attacks that you want to uh, that you want to avoid. I wonder. I think that The Last of Us has very grounded combat and it's it's a lot more thoughtful take on a shooter. Um, I almost said this in the video, but I didn't because I felt like it would just get... Maybe I did say it. I don't think I did, though. I almost said this in the video, but I felt like it would just... Oh, I ran into him and died. Because uh, I, I almost... Because um, I, I felt like people would uh, would take it the wrong way. But it almost feels like it's it's kind of it's kind of like the Dark Souls of third-person shooters. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's very thoughtful. You're supposed to line up your shots a lot more. It's, a, it's about conserving conserving your health, taking your moment, avoiding enemy fire. But it's kind of like kind of Dark Soulsy with with range combat. And I would really like to see a game try to do that, which is um, like way more than than what the, the the actual Dark Souls game with range combat that just came out recently did. Uh, I can't remember what that's called. Someone in chat might know what it is. It came out I think this year, and people say it's pretty bad. Uh, but it's something that's that's a lot slower. But yeah, I, I think that um, Naughty Dog should really try to, to take more pains to, to increase their um, their gameplay. And I'm glad that you told me that, Carlos, because I was really worried about Last of Us Part Two. So if they're if they're taking that those extra steps, I would really appreciate that. Maybe they, they can uh, improve on it because like as as much as I thought Last of Us the gameplay was was fine, like it was it was like it can be intense and it can get you into these situations where you're almost in like like a more grounded kind of almost like it's more of a of a of a thriller kind of action set piece thriller almost like post-apocalyptic horror set piece con compared to like the bombastic kind of like huge action movie set piece that you can get in in uncharted but uh whereas most of the the fight scenes in or the shootouts in Uncharted 1, 2, and 3, especially 1, felt like just filler, like they're just throwing the same ingredients at you over and over and over again. Uh, the, the fight scenes and the combat shootouts in Last of Us felt a lot more uh, focused and they had more points to them and it felt much more, each one felt feels more unique. And I'm sure that if you go through it all, you can find areas that, you know, it's not that, you know, it is it is kind of the same pieces over and over and over again. But I, uh, I think that the, the last of us pulled it off and most of the common encounters felt, felt good. Most of them. Did have some problems I went into the video on though, yeah. Hmm. The action scenes in Last of Us remind me of the action scenes in Children. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually a really good comparison, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you there. Last of Us is a Dark Souls action adventure game, exactly. Yeah, I liked Uncharted 4 a lot, it's my favorite out of the four games. Yeah, I th in terms of gameplay, it's my favorite too. I think it might be my favorite overall as well. I'm not sure, it's between that one and three. I think it must be. Best has, story and best gameplay. Yeah, it has the best story, I, and it has the best gameplay, but I'm not sure if it has the best set pieces, and that's why I really like about those games, but I think it probably is my favorite. 
The Last of Us is better than 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 four though. Naughty Dog's gameplay in the recent games has always felt like they're chasing a feeling when playing or in scenes rather than the actual mechanics itself. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I'm not sure if, if that's true of um, of um, Uncharted 4, but yeah, like yeah, they're they're chasing a feeling, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that there is room in games for that sort of thing. But yeah, some people really don't like that, which is why the uh, the title of the video I made is is the way it is. You know, it's it's great and terrible games as a double meaning because I think that. I think Uncharted 1 is terrible, and the and Last of Us is great, and Uncharted 3 and Uncharted 2 are kind of in the middle, so it's un, it's great and terrible games because that's my opinion on them, but also uh, a lot of people think that they're great, and a lot of people think that they're terrible for that exact reason that you just said, so yeah, that's why it's titled the way it is, and some people just take that value at, at that title at face value, which is fine, like that's, that's the danger of having something that's a little bit of a provocative title is that some people are just going to take it as it is um but i think it worked out okay if you still have time have you discovered yet what made half-life's one and two such great games and why there are so few if any like it i've been wondering this for years huh been asked a lot this way. So I'm not the biggest fan of those games. I do I do enjoy them. Uh, I th I don't know which one I would enjoy more. Probably two. I feel like you have quite a lot of freedom in those games. You can you can move through the levels quite quickly. The like the way the momentum works in those games is pretty good. You can you can run through it real fast you know you're not you're not stuck doing like set pieces and, and bullshit often you know what i mean like you you can just play the game um that's after the 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 beginning of course like the the opening to half-life one and two is actually really bad um for for replay value ah, some parts of half-life 2 actually i'm wrong like some parts of half-life 2 get in your way but when you're when you're not in those moments like you can just you can just play you know what i mean like you there's a lot there's a lot of freedom to it and it just feels pretty good you know there's there's no you can run and gun you can use cover if you want there's no none of this bullshit like oh wait for the the, the crosshair reticle to tighten up so you can lame up your shot like it's there's no iron sights you can just just aim it and you know you, your aiming is as good as you are in the game but at the same time you don't have to have like huge twitch reflexes if you don't if you don't want to play it that way you know it's it's accessible while also being you know you can easily choose how difficult you want to make it and uh the the world is quite provocative and it, it for the time both of them looked really good um there was all that talk about how half-life one was the first game that really had this kind of cinematic first person shooter kind of um uh, match of, of like story and, and gameplay and everything but I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with that and I didn't play Half-Life until it was already I think two years old so uh, close to release but not quite at release so I'm not sure um, yeah it's, they're just rock solid games I think and um, the the AI in the first one was also like fantastic too right like it's it still holds up pretty pretty well there must be something there's, there's not one thing I can point to in these games that's like, yeah, that's why. So it might just be just like a shit ton of refinement that would be really hard to, to, to nail down. But yeah, so I'm going to go with that. My answer is just a lot, a lot of refinement of a kind of like how Blizzard used to make their games, you know, like with um, with even Hearthstone, but like Starcraft 2, um, World of Warcraft, Warcraft 3, you know, it's like they don't really do anything all that like, oh my god, like that you can point to, but there's just like just so much refinement, right? Um, I would say the only oh my god thing that, that Half-Life did was, was probably the AI, but I'm going on secondhand information from that. What are your actual opinions on Blizzard? Uh, very negative, but I don't think Blizzard is, is the company that, uh, that I first experience with them the first blizzard game that i properly played was world of warcraft i played a little bit of warcraft um one of the ones on the playstation one i think that was warcraft 2 and i played a little bit of warcraft 3 and a little bit of starcraft 1 and then just like just like maybe an hour maybe two and that was it and uh and but the first blizzard game that i properly played was um was world of warcraft and they're just they're just not that company anymore like quite literally not that company anymore uh and they i don't know if they were always like they were always just out it out for just the money you know like all companies are out for money but 
you know, some, some companies are out just for the profit, other companies are out for the profit so they can make better products and just kind of snowball between make better products to make better, to make more money, to make better products, to make more money. Whereas there was a, so some can be it just for the art, you know, they, they want to make better products and that's it. And, and um, whatever money they make is because the end goal is just for the product or the art. Um, whereas you can probably like, alternate between the two just fine you know be, be profit motive but also really want the best product that you possibly can uh but at some point around hearthstone uh blizzard decided to cash out and it's just since then it's just been it feels to me non-stop just hey we're just we're just cashing in all of our goodwill and all of our rabid fan base uh for as much money as we possibly can before they realize that we're not the blizzard that they that they uh that they fell in love with and this is from someone who was never really in love with Blizzard. I just really, really loved World of Warcraft. And I would say that that happened around Hearthstone. And it just has taken this long for most people to notice because they were able to put up with it, you know? Like, it's like, oh, okay, it's not too bad, you know? Or as I think a lot of people saw the writing on the wall uh, when it came to Hearthstone's monetary model and, and what happened with Heroes of the Storm and the way World of Warcraft went after um, after Wrath of the Lich King. I was wondering when watching the code vein, what VODs do you not like using the block and souls like games, or is it something you need to code vein? Uh, the only two souls like games that I use the block extensively on are Neo and Dark Souls 1, because both of those games are built around using the block for different moves. Um, just, just part of it, you know? Um, but I probably would try to play Dark Souls 1 without blocking now if I played it again, which would probably mean I have to relearn that whole entire game. I There are some bosses I have never beaten in Dark Souls 1 without blocking, without a shield, whereas I never use a shield in Dark Souls 2 and 3. Um, you know, like Dark Souls 1 is, like the, the Miyazaki has just come out and said, it's built around the shield, you don't have to use it, but it's, it's you're intended to use one, it's right there. Um, like the encounters are, are built around it. Uh, and I, I feel the need to use a shield more in Dark Souls 1 when I ever go back and play it. Uh, especially like like uh, Stannis the Manus, you know? Um, but I'm curious if I could get through it now with, with the 60 frames per second uh, remaster thing on, on Steam. I wonder if I could get through it because that was one of the main reasons why. I don't know why. Like, I find it much harder to reliably dodge all the attacks in Dark Souls 1 than I do in Dark Souls 2 and 3, even though the attacks are much faster in, in uh, 3 and to some extent 2 as well. Uh, but the reason why I don't use the, the block in Code Vein is because it's not a 100% block. So to me, it's like I can take a little bit of damage by blocking, or I can learn how to dodge every single attack and never take any damage. So that's how I feel about the block in, in Code Vein. So that's why I don't use it. And just don't get hit, exactly. 